The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. Okay, good afternoon. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. I didn't expect so many people to come. Okay. Uh, thank you for your support. All right. Um, so today we'll start with a very short, very very short introduction to Navajo, also known as the Native Zaj. And uh, we will, um, because, allow me to explain, okay, Navajo is one of the most complicated Native American languages out there. I've been trying to learn it for three years and I'm still learning it, and I'm still learning it. Okay, so if you notice the numbers, the, 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 the obesable strange symbols on top, that's me trying to keep track of how many spaces there are in the Navajo book to insert prefixes and suffixes. <laughs> so, yeah, otherwise, I, I can tell it to you, but I don't know um, exactly what are the, the correct terms, but that's how many, in, you know, to have in your memory to put in uh, to create one verb. Okay. So anyway, let's start. So, um, so before we begin, uh, let me just let you know that the word Navajo is not actually a native uh, word. They don't call themselves Navajo. Uh, they call themselves, along with the other tribes from the same language family, Diné or Diné. There's a tribe in Canada that calls them Diné. There's a Tene, but they all come from the same um, um, family, the way Indo-European. Thank you. 
Okay, so you have some idea how it sounds like. Are you gonna need it again? Sorry? You gonna need it again? No, no. No? Because I'm thinking you're gonna get it just to show an example of what what's open. Okay, this is a bit faster than what normal I mean, the the normal pace of speaking is actually is very it's a weather report. It's a news uh, news uh, channel from Arizona and uh, that's a weather report in Navajo. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh crap. <laughs> sorry, so sorry. What's going on? Uh, no, it's the computer. Well, it's just said something to make sure that. Oh, it's probably this one. Oh, actually, no, it's the desktop, so I just drag it over. Go like this. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. Um, this is a joke I saw on the internet. Uh, it's on Facebook, and somebody was at least you can't read it um, at a grocery store, a long queue. There was a woman talking on the phone in a very strange language, of course. And then the, the American guy behind her, the, the white guy, my apologies, said, "Excuse me," but and when she finished talking, excuse me, I didn't want to say anything while you were on the phone. But here in America, we speak of course the lady turned around, looked at me in the eye, and said, like, "Excuse me." And he said, well, if you want to speak, the man kept going on it. If you want to speak Mexican, you go back to Mexico. You know, in America, we speak English. And what she said, so I was speaking Navajo. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to speak English, go back to English. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so, yes, just a little joke. But uh, I don't know how true this is, this was on the internet. Right, so thanks for Navajo before me. Um, so, as I said, um, the Navajo is called the Dene. It's low height of Dene. Okay, and it means the people, or and the language is the net design. So before we go into the grammar, uh, a little bit about word forming in the language is that um, in a phrase, a possessive phrase uses two nouns, the head noun and the what do you call it, the, the possessed noun, with the possessive suffix. B means his, her, or its. So the word is the people, his, okay, his, her, its, or their language. Okay, so it's like. Uh, John's house is John, his house. And this pronoun doesn't have any plural distinction. So it would be a person, his language, or people, their language. The people and their language. Uh, so it's the native uh, In English, the language of the people. And the Navajo is not, it's not a native word at all, like I said before. It's actually the, the table word meaning something like wide field, large field, broad field. It's a description from a neighboring tribe, as, you know, as always. Um, the name is, uh, is spoken by approximately 160,000 to 170,000. I don't have the exact statistics, but I believe it is the language which has the most, the most stable number of native speakers, and in fact, it may be increasing um, compared to the other native languages. And it has special states because, in the, um, as, you, as you obviously heard, in the, during the 1940s, it was one of the uh, languages, there were several languages used by the American uh, code talkers, in fact, and this was the most commonly used one. So imagine breaking a code that sounds like that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So these are so. Let's break down the sounds, okay? Um, like any language, uh, Navajo has sub, uh, consonants and vowels. So the vowel sounds we're familiar if you speak Polish, for example, because they are nasal sounds, and they use the ogonek as in Polish. So um, shall I run through? You want to follow my pronunciation? Sure. Okay, good. So the, the the short A is pronounced uh. Uh, uh, yes. So sha with a high tone. The, the, yes. Sha sha means for me. It's actually sh ah, and it combines. It's for me. So the 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 sh means I or me or my, and the ah means for. So this language, as you can see, uses post positions like Japanese or Turkish. They come. There's no preposition. They come afterwards. And the word and the following word sa. Sa. So this is a long A. Ah. So a uh, ah. Uh. So when you say up, uh, your mouth is a bit more um, closed, it's more central, like a schwa. But when you go longer, it's ah, uh, sa. Uh, uh, and it means word, language, or words and languages, because nouns usually don't show a singular plural. Thank God. Okay, because the verbs do, and they show a lot of it. And then you're uh, the, the, the short A is uh, 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 uh
Some, some, some. Kind of like the French uh, beer word for yes. <laughs> but some, with a low tone, it means old age. Some. And it's also used to derive uh, words, for example, for grandmother and grandfather. Those who are old or the ancient ones, they use some. And, and very sun, sun, sunny, and things like that. And then the law is. Play child, eh? Okay, we'll go to the shell. The L with the. Oh, you can't see it with the. With the bell, bar L is pronounced sh. If you, no, not sh. If you speak Welsh, you can do it. Yes. Or or a Welsh or a yes or a Kazian or a Kabanian yes. Very charming. Very charming. And we're going to choose K. K. Okay, but then we'll go to the when we go to the concert. I'll tell you why it's K and not K. Okay, K. You see the tone K. And with a horn, as in a horn, is a day. A day. A day. Uh, this is a bit hard, this is the then this is the next one. The short E with the Mogonic is A. So it's a So now here's one thing. The end can be can be syllabic. Ends can be uh, and can be vowels. So it can be A. This is A A E E A but all got it right, perfect. And the word and the word uh, for ward or, or a bump is says. So you just say this. No tone says. Okay, okay, all clear so far? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just started. Um, the Shua. short I, the short I is also close to to schwa, it's like an E. This is shit. This is shit. Shit means I. Okay. Shit is for me. Oh yeah. It's like the English E in bit. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Like in English. Yes. And and the word if you speak Burmese, who speaks Burmese, you recognize this because the word for this is B. Is it like Burmese? Is it Burmese? You recognize it? Yeah. 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 What is that? What is that? This is Burmese. Yeah. It's the same word. It's and the same tone. E. E. This. Just me. E. They both derive from Proto Navajo Burma, I suppose. We can talk more about that. I have very interesting theories about that. Okay. So just a long so this is so you learn the long the okay so a e i you learn the short form now we go to uh, the short and the long nasal form the same thing so the e and e so a tin 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 so so you notice the t s the t t t and the global stop a words cannot begin with vowels in Navajo if they have they will take on a global stop. So it's not like like French where your word will run together. No, you you keep the vowels at the beginning of the word separate from the next word. So it's but <laughs> same. <laughs> there, there's another word if you, you don't join. It's it's separate. It's a separate word. Beautiful. And the word for four is very close to the word for this, but with nasal. D. So it's D and D. And lots of D. And now the word for water is. No 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 no. Listen to me. Tall. And why this happens is the T in Navajo has, has is not is not aspirated like in English. It's velarized. The 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 the, the, the comes with back of the throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like that. If you were to write it into German, it almost sounds like a, like something like a like a T plus a CH or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And if you read in German, so it's tall, tall, tall water. And Doda. Doda. No, Doda. It's one of the words for no, this is, this is used in the normal indication in a verb, so to say Doda. And it works like French. So you put the Do in front of uh, the verb, and the Da comes after it to negate a verb. For example, this is how it, yeah, to make it negative. It is not, I am not. Yeah, we'll see if some of that is wrong. And the word for star is Son. 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 And the word for fairy dog, which I love, is Dlong. Yep, you guys are good, yeah, not bad. Sorry, so it seems that the only vowel that changed the quality is A. And I, the E, as well. It's a bit like, it's a bit not E, but E. E. The short I, E. The short I? This one is shit. It's not she, it's shit. Okay, okay, okay. The rest, yeah, the rest of the vowel, yeah. They're quite similar. So there's no difference. Oh, there, there are lots of diphthongs, yes, but I didn't include them, but because no, most diphthongs will be, um, they are basically without, without like, um, okay, like, A and A, or A and A, so it's I, A, yeah, so it's, it's pretty much, then. there's no, uh, 
I said, okay, I'm gonna show you the console in Adobe Show. But you've, you've seen what it okay. So this is based this is based on the, this is the Navajo writing system, that's how they spell it. Of course, so it's not the same as IPA. Okay, so the, you might notice that there is the B, D, G. Okay, so the, this series are actually unvoiced sounds. So it's not B, it's like in Mandarin. So it's ba, da, cha, you know? Yeah, so sorry. Ba, da, da, la, cha, ka. But some sounds, like the D, when they're between two vowels, can be voiced. If you ask an alpha, they say no, it's a da, but actually they say the. It's an alpha operation. And before, and next to a nasal sound, it becomes a bit like a D or a B. Okay? Something weird, there's no P. And in their language. They don't like to use the lips. It's very rare. And not only that, but all, all the languages in their family do not like to have, do not have a lot of uh, bilingual sounds. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, so this is the only sound at the end. But the M is very rare. It doesn't occur in, in a lot of words. Maybe barely, what, less than 20 words that are commonly used have an M sounds. So this is, uh, this is very interesting. Um, then the rest of it, the series is pronounced like, kind of like Mandarin. You might not you might be familiar with <laughs> No 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 almost there. Club. Cling on yeah. Cling cling on uh cling on Okay. Okay, so any questions so far before we go to the ejective series? Okay. Now we come the famous ejective sounds. Very common in North America. Does that thing on you? Uh, no. Okay, that's right. Yeah. But anyway, so they are pronounced like like an unvoiced but with a glottal stop, and they are not clicks. When you make a click, you you, you sort of suck the air in. This one, you, it, it comes out of your mouth very soft. Yeah, these are very common in the mouth. And also, uh, then the rest of these are quite the same, uh, except here, S and F. Okay, this, this some languages have, have more, but Navajo is just a, it, there's no uh, other, there's no k, k, k. No, this is just a. Uh, and then, sorry. Yeah. Are any of those similar to like Zulu or Kosa or any no. fun? Ejective stops are very similar to Zulu uh, simple stops, but they are, they are stronger. Yeah, but like, very light. But this is harder than the Zulu ones. Yeah, like the Zulu when they have the with a T or a, or a P. Yeah, yeah. But but very very light. Yeah. But this is a lot. This is really strong. And uh, the the Z Z series is the same. This is Z. It's a very common sound in 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 that language. And uh, this, no, no, don't, 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 don't. It, 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 it's, it, it's closer to the front. It's like uh, something like the way Germans say R, I don't know, rather than the French. Greek. Oh, Greek, Greek, yeah, 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 Greek, something, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the H. So in now there's a distinction between the H and the H. There's a distinction between H and H. And, and the rest are quite standard. M, L, Y, yeah, it's quite standard. Yes, yes. Uh, what what are the different? Uh, uh, you have uh, heard twice, right? Uh, sorry. Oh, yes. My mistake. I, I tapped it twice. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. It's my mistake. It's like don't 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 look at this one. Yeah, it should be here. There's no voice uh, voice page though. No. <laughs> it should be in this series. Yeah. Sorry, it's my mistake. Yes. Okay, so now we go to the four main noun classes. Uh, classes. classes. Um, basically, they have pronouns, nouns, verbs, and particles. There are no adjectives and all. So, um, and some people argue. Some people argue that the verbs are actually of nominal origin, but they both both consider them as verbs. Um, Sorry, the noun. Yes. Uh, so there are four noun classes. Four, and one is noun. Four, four, four classes, parts of speech. Four words classes. Wow, classes word are, classes. In general, in the language, all noun yeah, yeah. classes. Sorry. Yeah. Brian, are like in Korean and in some of Japanese, yes. the, the adjectives are verbs. Yes. Uh, in this case, they're, they're, they're in, fact, in, in this language, language, they're definitely verbs. They are like they function exactly like verbs. Uh, so the things Korean. to be yes, like Korean, to be big, to be broad, to be tall. These are actually verbs. Uh, then we have okay. So, uh, before we go on, uh, let, let me just explain about the uh, grammar, uh, gender, and number, okay? Uh, pronouns and nouns have no gender. So there's no he, she, it, there's only uh, a singular and plural, and duo, okay? Now, so there's no plural markings on most nouns, but verbs and pronouns are marked for singular, dual, or more than two, okay? How this works is, if you, uh, I'll go to the top spot later on. The verb changes, it, it doesn't change, it's replaced completely, by a different verb when it refers to a singular object that is performing the action, a dual, two people, or they are performing the action, and or more than two. So 
Yishash means I am walking because I. No. Yes. You want to say Yishash? Yishash. I am on a path. I'm walking on a path. Yes. And Yitash. Yitash means we, but two of us are walking. Yitash. Yitash. And Yikha. Yikha. Yeah, you've got it. Yikha. Yikha means that three or more people are walking on. Now, the difference is. Oh, oh, sorry. The reason you might notice is that the um, this part is different, but this is more or less the same, right? Okay, the difference is uh, you were learning to in Navajo that the this the, the rightmost sound is usually the verb stem. So ash, uh, ash. Uh, this is actually ya, but it, it, it undergoes a change. Ash, uh, ash, uh, ka. Are verbs that mean to walk along. So it's two people, one person, two people, or three, or three people more. And and this is actually uh, what is known as a. Um, an epithetic uh, prefix because Navajos do not like to use words where there are only a one syllable, especially a verb. A verb must have two syllables. Oh. It must have two syllables. So even if there's only sharp, they will add a yin to make it sound right. <laughs> to make it, yeah, 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 to make it sound right. So there's always a. It, it's actually sharp, but then there's yin too. So. But the yin has many functions as well. This is just one of them. So yi, So this is yi uh, So the, the yi and the ta here means um, we. We, two, two of us. Okay. All right. Any questions for now? Okay. Then we go to something more interesting. Okay. <laughs> right. So the pronouns. Let's just go to talk about singular, dual, plural. Here are the pronouns. Okay. So um, you might be wondering why there are four pronouns. Four pronoun sets. Okay. Well, we'll start with the typical uh, Indo-European I, you, he, she. Okay. So I is she. 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 I you see it. And the dual is nihe. Nihe. And dan nihe. Dan nihe means uh, so it's I, the two of us. So there's no inclusive exclusive uh, distinction like in Indonesia. So it's, it's just I and I and you or I and somebody else and we. Okay? And the same for this. Ne, 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 ne. It means you and you all. You, you two, you all. And this is the same. There's no distinction. So I don't know. So you, you use the pronoun alone. You don't know whether you're talking about you all or all of us. You have to see the verb. That's why the verb is so important in number. So, so a very little information is supplied by nouns and pronouns. I mean, there are, but not as much information as in verbs. So you so so, so in Navajo, you like Japanese, you can drop the pronouns and any part of the sentence except the verb. I think Korean does the same as well. You can drop any meaningful uh, unit except the verb, which is the most important. And you have big, big, da, big, which is he, she, uh, he or she, uh, the two he, she, or two of them, and all of them. Thing, okay. And now comes my favorite pronoun. Oh. Okay, now this sounds very Chinese. Um, oh, this is very interesting. Why are there four sets of uh, four persons in Navajo? Uh, uh, okay, um, yes, sorry. Is it for uh, animate and inanimate objects? Uh, close, but not not exactly. Um, anybody, another guess? One guess? Yes. Uh, maybe if you just refer to two different third persons. Yes. Uh, this one and that one. Right idea, wrong language. That was in Cree. Oh, okay. But it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the right, got the right idea. Yeah. Is it proximal and distal? No, no that, that, that was in Cree. That's another idea. Oh, but it, it, yeah, you've got the idea. No, but in this case, okay, let's give an example. Tim, can you describe the person in front of you? I haven't seen him. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, can, you, can you just tell me who, who he is? Or? Um, okay, okay. You just did, you just did, you just broke a taboo in Navajo because you asked a person to talk. Okay. Never mention a person's name in their presence and never point at them or touch them. <laughs> so how do they avoid this? How do they say like, oh, can you tell uh, like Tim they use the fourth person to avoid referring to the person's name? But there are many other functions. There's one of them. There's one function. Another function I think is used in when you tell stories. It's like this was said by people. So you're, so you're using something uh, to refer to what uh, somebody unspecified said. So you're trying to be unspecific to show respect. It's a form of distance. It's the same with, uh, this is also used, for, for example, in, in uh, when you say something like, I've read in stories like a person talking about her father or her mother came to visit. So they would use the fourth person, they would use the conjugation for this rather than he or she, this one they use this. Yes. Would that also be used for royalty? Uh, well, they don't have really royalty, they have got tribal chiefs, but yes, to show respect to any elders or to people, even in your own family, okay. yes, they will use the whole form to refer to them. Mm -hmm. And even to talk to them in command, sometimes they use it as well, uh, like to, to, to this bit. Like when you tell children, uh, uh, don't, like, don't, um, I don't, know, don't, don't spit in public, they'll say something like, they use this expression, the whole or that whole, and to make a verb, to like, you know, people don't spit in public, it's not the right thing to do, you shouldn't do it. 
So the second person entered. Oh yeah, same as the bill. Yes, but not first person. No, no. Yeah. And yes. One, uh, one does, it, does, it, does it have a similar usage as in English? Like one must not. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. But in this case, it, it has more. It has more functions because it's like that, yeah, because to refer to people who are in your presence, but you want to be respectful to them. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's very simple. What you say. I guess last question. And they don't call them by their name, they have usually call them by like brother, sister, grandmother. You don't use a person name, it's, it's a rule. So, uh, and you don't have a second formal person? No, no, there's no second. No. And this is the word for the same pronoun, set for, for position. So, all, as I said before, all the pronouns have a prefix. They have so, a prefix to either the noun or the postposition that comes after them. So, you want to go through, but it's the same. It's the same. So and, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. It's like a, it's it's a suffix. Uh, sorry, prefixes to nouns. And this works with all nouns. So uh, when you show possession, you want to say the the Dene language. The Dene bizarre. So it's, this is the B. This is the one. That I'm this is the B. So it gets Can you say it by itself, or is it no. a really uh, yeah. possessed? Some nouns have to be possessed, one of the uh, possessed, but possessed, and one of them is body parts. So normally people will say, if you're saying, I saw a head, somebody's head, you say a tail. There's another problem is someone's head. You For body parts, you assume that they are attached to a living thing. <laughs> <laughs> you assume that they are, so you cannot say, I saw a head, you must say like <coughs> somebody's head, so a tail. And I think things like wings, horns, animal parts as well, is up. They, they take a, a prefix that shows that they are possessed by an, by an unspecified person. Yeah. Not are you I'm just going very quickly. Uh, okay. Right. So these are pronouns, the same thing, the exact same pronouns with post positions. Now if you're if you're careful, if I know something peculiar about this, what was the previous one? <laughs> but this is shit. Okay, now this language has um, it's what I call sibilant harmony. So a sun and a shirt cannot appear in the same word. So, so just like previously, as you see, because the word contains uh, back, 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 yeah, sit. So this is a t. So the sh, you, can, you cannot put sh. You have to change it into an s. Sit, sit, But since the, the next word does not have a t, it's a k. So it's sh. So the sh will change into an, an s depending on whether it's uh, the following, the sound of the following. Uh, uh, the following element in the same word, so it can be a, a suffix, it can be a prefix, as long as the whole word cannot have a sh and a z together, and a z and a z as well. This is, this is peculiar. All right. Uh, okay. I think we're done with that. Okay. Now, question words. Want to ask questions? Like, so uh, the word for where is hardish? Hardish. Hardish. I will ask. I will we'll, we'll work on some questions there. How, where, where are you from? Where are you? Hardish. Hagosh. 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 Okay, so now, now notice when I say gosh, I say gosh. The O makes the T and the D uh, legalize the word. So it's gosh, tosh, gosh, hagosh, hadish, 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 hadish is what? Yes. So, um, uh, so, so this is not a mistake. It, it, yeah. You can uh, so uh, uh, yeah correct. So what is this? Haish <laughs> atin. Who is a who 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 is it? Who is it? Haish <laughs> atin. Who is it? Yeah. And and we'll we'll break this down here. So it's who who are you? And then and then the word for what? Okay. Uh, this is the way they say dish how will you? What is this called? Ah, good word. Dish. Dish. Ha. In speech, ha is a short form of of atish. It's a short name, they give you short. So, this is how we So, this what is called. It is the verb and it comes at the end of the So, the verb is always at the end of a sentence. Uh, if you see a word at the end, it's always, the, it's always imagine it's a verb and, and you're 99.99% right. So, okay? This is, the, this is the way the language runs. Now, okay, so, more question words. So, remember the, the hai, the hai sh, who? So, who are you is hai sh an king. <laughs> okay, so you might notice something peculiar. The first time we said who is he or what is it is an a is a a a a a but there's a ni here. So this language you put the you contribute something you put the pronoun into the word. Do you feel warm? 
Yeah. I think it's gone, yeah. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to feel the lights here. Thank you. So, so the, the untamed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you can say unnitain or unnamed means uh, who are you. This is the word you are. Yeah, so, so what happens is the, uh, the, the, the pronoun goes between uh, the prefix and, and the verb. So, <laughs> So, would you want to make sure to pronounce this one? Beautiful. Height A, height A, Goshan. Double A, Yannick. Yannick. Sorry, yes, it's Victor. The one uh, where you have like a high tone over one A yes. and the low tone uh, on the second one, is that the falling tone? This one, where? Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. It's a high and low, yeah. High A. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Yeah. High and low, so it's A. Okay. Um, who wants to say this? Tim, would you like to pronounce it? Take a challenge. You, you did it well. Go Shan. 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 You see how difficult this is for us? Yes, yeah. yeah, okay. So, to break it down, folks, to break it down, we'll, 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 we'll have some nice sentences later. To break it down, what it means is, okay, why? And remember what is it? Do, da, means no. Do, da. Ah, it's like French. Je ne sais pas, je ne, je ne, je ne les aime pas. Oh, wait, voilà. So, so the do and the da comes here. And this is the part that is the verb, actually. Is. So this is to him. Remember the big, the dene bizarre, same word. This is the same thing. So, which name is to him. And this is the word means to talk. You talk. Remember the, the ne and the ne? It's the same. So, the, the you comes between the, the two prefix, the, the, the two parts of the word. So, it's not, it's not a European where you change uh, the ending, you put it between, you push, squeeze it between the. Yeah. That's how it is. Is that. Am I going too fast or is it not? Okay, yes. about 10 more minutes till we get more questions, okay? Okay, this. Okay, so, pronouns. Uh, sorry, um, demonstrating pronouns. Okay, so, D. Me. Meaning, Me. yes, Me. you speak Burmese, and also, and also this. So this language uses this, this, and that far away. Uh, other languages work like this. Italian, Italian, Italian. Italian. Japanese. Japanese, yes, beautiful. Hi, right. Indonesian. So D. Oh, yes, of course, naturally. D, D. Uh, okay, so again, no distinction between singular, plural, nothing. D is this. So like this pen. So D. Okay, I don't have to A is that. And A is that way over there. A. And A also means that those. There's no similar conversation. Okay. The verbs. The verbs. The verbs will change. Okay, so here are some common nouns and how they, they make nouns uh, out of uh, very common objects. Um, common objects in Navajo have, I think they're probably only about. A couple hundred words that are made of single, sim that are actually simple nouns, like in English you say uh, uh, a child, ant, you know, a spider, things that are, are simple. They most, almost all nouns you see in a dictionary will be compound nouns. Okay. So the word for glass is tesson, 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 which means, which means, this is the word for stone and this is the word for star, the stone star, or oh, and it's glass. Yes. Uh, Cla uh, uh, means that uh, you're behind, uh, your buttocks, uh, and cut refers to either cloth or leather. So the leather that you wrap around your buttocks is your skirt. Or <laughs> <laughs> dress and it became dress. And tintra. Tintra. Forest. Forest means among the trees. Ta is a very, very interesting word because this a lot of words can be used as verbs, nouns, and, and also as, uh, uh, what is it, verbs, nouns, and verbs as well. So, ta in this case means between. So, between the trees. Or among, among the trees. And that's the word for forest or jungle. And the word for. Uh, and then the same ta. Remember the word dene? Meaning? Pe no, no, no. Dene is people. So, dene ta is from the Navajo country. Among the people. Among the people. The same for na kai. Na kai means Mexican. Mexican. And among the Mexicans in na kai ta means Mexico. So I went to Mexico, I went among the Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, and that's how they talk. If you live in a tribal society, to go to another country is to go among another tribe. So that's how they, they talk. Love chin. The grass that stinks or the grass that smells. Love is grass. Love. And play agent. Play agent means cold. Cold. 
clay is either soil or dirt and gin, gin is black so the black the black soil the black the black uh, the black dirt is coal charcoal yeah so okay any questions for now okay remember the word far it, it's going to appear in another very very common word later on hold on just note this okay now this one so the word for tractor the word for car is chidi and the, the, the sound chid is when you start a car chid 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 that's a and the A is is a, is the that which that which is like the third in Chinese. So that which makes chit, and that's the car. Mm. And chit also means to squat. So maybe it could be the thing that squats. Uh, a car. So yeah. So it's a car and na na a. Okay, this is where it gets complicated now. Okay, so this is actually a verb. So you use a, a, a verb that's been transformed into a noun, and this means tractor. So it's a car that crawls around. So this is three has three parts. Na means around. And the last part is usually the verb na, na, na. Sorry, it's a little na. Means to na. crawl. To crawl. Na. But, but, but you add another another word here that relative this with high tone. It shows it means that which crawls. So that which is a car which crawls, and that's a tank. A tank with tractor. Oh, sorry, a tank. Sorry, tractor. Sorry. Yes. Because uh, it's actually the same. Yeah. In the same. Uh, same semantic class. Okay. Tractor. tractor. Okay, and then the word for we'll go on later. The word for water is tontail. Tontail. So to is water. Tontail is a verb meaning to be white. This is a verb. So the white water is the ocean. Yes, and tsunami. Tsunami is a boat. Tsun. Remember the word tsun in the word for forest. So the word for tree, right? Is also the word for wood. And this a means it floats around. Nae. So tsun nae. The the wood that floats around is a boat. And the word for gun, I love this word pay and no. Yeah. What would they do if a log was floating around? Oh, they, they, use, they would use another word. Uh, there's another word for this. But because the word for float, for a log, is different from when it's a bubble. It's a different action. So it's a different word. <laughs> different word. A different verb. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So pay and no means a gun. No means to explode. No. No. So pay, pay here means with it. So remember the B? The name is The name is that. This is the same thing, but the A here means with it. It's used for tools, like I, I write with a pen, you know, I hit him with a hammer. So with it, an explosion is made, the gun. And with it, hammering is made, t -t 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 a hammer. That's what it means. And the A here is uh, the thing which... And now, do for teacher, Ba'ot 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 is teacher. And it comes from... Remember the word, the word among the the mix, the ta, it's the same word, ta. But in this case, it means, can I write with this? Yeah. It means a series of, because when you walk, uh, uh, walk among people, you have to go into, through uh, an area, right? So it looks like lines, right? Now what do they look like? Writing numbers, things that are written in, in a series of lines. So it means to do, yeah, it, 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 this is how they, they think, to do some things that involve a series, to read, to count. And this word is the word for to study. And to be able to read, to count, or to study. To, to do things in a series. Which is also the word for to slip in between something. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. So that's how they that's how you create abstract uh, uh, yeah. So and this form also means to study and to make somebody study. So when you add the L here, it means to be made to study. Or or conversely, studying is done for. So studying is done. Remember the word for the first word sha for me. Sha ba means for what is b? Him exactly or her. Studying is done for him or her. That's the teacher. Mm -hmm. So the nabo say no no not studying is not. We don't study. We study because of the teacher. She made us study. That's that's why we study. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's in their language. Yeah, that's the word. So it's not like you know to say that to study is something that, that it's done. It's something that you're you're doing for somebody else. It's like, I don't need it. I'm doing something else. So yes, I, I suppose you can you, you see the history of the, the culture in this world. Yeah. So, so, with this in mind, so you notice a couple of things. Number one, the Navajo has a lot of very commonly used morphemes that they juggle around and they spin to create new words in a very, very creative and complex fashion, obviously. Because a lot of this, like the E and the, the toe water, the word for, for rock, the, the B, and even the, the ta are extremely commonly used and they can be used as prepositions, postpositions, they can be, sorry, uh, postpositions, as nouns, as verbs, they can be used to create nouns from other nouns and so on. Okay? Uh, the word for shoe, for example, is also the word for foot. Kie, kie. And it's also used for the word for to track someone by foot. 
Yes. To check someone's life with you. I hear you. Yes, it is exactly. So now, so so we go. So now, once we know this, let's see the word for tank. So we know that Chirina and eight means tractor. Beldo is a Beldo uh, is a is a gun. So is a suffix that means big. You add so to anything, it means the big thing. So ten is a tree. Ten so is a big tree, for example. You can't do that. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. okay. So this word means. So this one means a, a tractor, the car that crawls around, the gun, the thing that goes boom, like, or it explodes, makes an explosion. The car, again, you notice the big, the same big again. Car means the surface. So the car means its surface or on it. So the, the tractor, or, or the, rather the, the tractor, the big gun, on it, on top, on which it is, uh, on, it, on which it is put, the things are put around it. To put. So it means the, the, the tractor on which a big gun has been put on. Um, or something like that. <laughs> and that means a tank. So a tractor they, they grow here. And the word tractor, yeah, so it's very descriptive. The minute you read a word in Navajo, you can tell exactly what it does. So during the war, when the Navajos were talking to yes. the no, 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 no. They had interesting, oh, that's interesting. When the co talkers talk, they actually use, um, what I know is they use ciphers. So they would use, say, for example, a name of a place like Tokyo or something. But they replace the T or the O with words that start in English. Like T might be a word for a, a common word like a tree. And it's it's They will use a Navajo word off of the, the cipher. No, but I mean, if they were going to say tank to you, there's 10 tanks over there. Yeah, yeah. Would they just say that? No, no, no. They would have code. They would, they, would say, they would show, yeah, in the war. I mean, in, in ordinary, in written Navajo, you yeah. might see this. I think they yeah, used the word turtle. turtle. Yeah. In the movie, they, they used the word turtle for tank. Exactly, yeah, turtle. Yeah, turtle. Here's my show. I can't remember it. Yeah. And it's only one syllable, I think. Yeah. That's why. So, basic, very basic grammar. Okay, basic grammar, subject, object, verb. So, Navajo is subject, object, verb. Like in Japanese and Korean and Turkish. Okay, now here's the weird thing. What you do, uh, who does what to whom is determined by animacy. So, we go to that. So, humans can do things to children. Children can do things to animals, to large animals, and large animals do things to small animals, and small animals do things to inanimate objects, and this way, but they can't go this way. So an animal cannot attack you. <laughs> no, you know, in order to say that, you must say, I let myself be attacked by an animal. <laughs> <laughs> so, next, so, so let's look for the word for man is Hastin. Shle <laughs> is a horse. <laughs> yes, tush. Tush means to kick. The word tush also means ankle. So to kick is to perform an action with the ankle. So you see what it means. So the, it's recycling a morphing. So the the man, uh, man horse kicked. So the, the man kicked the horse. This is fine, but you can't say the other. You can't say the horse kicked the man. You can't say that. You have to say the man was kicked or allowed himself to be kicked by the horse, and that means the horse kicked the man. You can't let an inf uh, not inferior but a lower animal, a lower uh, entity affect a uh, higher entity. So it has to be this way as well. Yeah. So if you're gonna say a stone fell on me. You have to use you know. You have to uh, use uh, an inanimate object, inanimate object working on, you have to do the inverse. So they take a lot of responsibility for things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can't say the child was like, lied to the No, the parent, was, the parent was lied to by the child. So the parent must always, must always be the first in the sentence. Yeah. Is that interesting? Yeah, that's the way they think. Okay. So uh, then we go, last bit before we go. Uh, okay, just to show you how the words are conjugated. Okay, now. So these are all the slots where the verb fits in. So the stem here, and this is a classifier that, that makes the verb either transitive or intransitive. You don't have to remember it. This is where the subject, the, remember the shi for I and the ni, it all, it all goes in here. And this, these two show the, the, the tense. So past tense, past tense, present tense, past, which is also known as perfective tense, which is an action that is finished. It's ongoing, it will occur, it should occur, and it occurs habitually by habit. So there are five modes. And these are the ones indicated. This is where you put the fourth person, the hope and the jit, uh, the one that shows that uh, um, a respected person or a person with a certain degree of distance does something to you or it does something. And this is a plural marker, usually da. And it refers usually uh, in some form of it that means a uh, plural. And then you have the iterate, uh, which is uh, a prefix, usually something like na or na or something like that. And it means that something is done uh, with an interval. Or something is done with the motion that you know, in, a, in a circular motion, it goes around, it does around. And then you have an adverb like uh, like uh, on top, below, uh, uh, away, or towards me. Yeah. And then you can also add another one, which is the post position and or the, the subject uh, uh, pronoun. So this is one, create one word in our home. 
But of course, not everyone uses all of these at the same time. Okay. So in this case, the word to play, very, very, very simply, I am playing. The I is here in the middle. Remember, it goes between the two. Ne is the word for play, and this is the word, ne. Ne means play. And na means around. But the weird thing is, this language uses a lot of idioms. So the word for play is to, to perform a process around something, to play around. And the word around must always occur with it. So na shne, which I am playing. You cannot say shne, no way. Number one, you need to have the na. Number two, it's only one syllable. A, a verb must have two syllables. So na shne, na shne, okay? and so on and so forth. So ne, e, ne, and so on and so forth. You see? And uh, see, so you notice the da, the da here, the da shows plural. More than two will take da. Anything where there are more than two will be da. Yeah. And or day in this case. Because they da will combine with the e and it creates it, yeah. It, it causes changes. So it's pretty complex, okay? <laughs> and okay, right. so this is only one I, I won't show you the past tense at all, but this gives you an idea of how they make verbs. This is how they conjugate verbs, okay? And and they and um, if you went for the first lecture on native American language, I gave you a really long, long example. Yeah, that's that would be the extreme case with all the uh, slots filled in. Yeah, but but most people don't. Oh, actually, they do. People use these long phrases as well, so it becomes naturally. Uh, yeah, and interesting semantics. For example, um, when we talk about movement, right? There's no word for go and come. There's no word for I went to town, he came to town. There's no such thing. The direction is not important. The movement, the type of movement, is important. So, to go on foot. So remember the word for, for ta, among, between? Kin means houses. Kin ta means among the houses, so it means town, because they're the towns. Go means towards. So towards the town, he goes, he went, sorry. Ia means he went. Or he came. He went to town or came down, there's no difference. What is important is he did the action on foot. And that's more, that's more important than knowing where he went. Okay, same thing here. So Kitago, and then this word here, really, oh, close, close, means to go on horseback. So he rode to town at a normal pace. If you say he rode to, uh, to town quickly on horse, you have to use another word to go. So with ino, ta, and so on and so forth. And on a wheeled vehicle, is like this. The word for, for wheeled is buzz, which we will see later in the word for zero. Because it looks like a wheel. Buzz. And this is, uh, yes. Kitago means o, o, ta. O -o -ta means to go by plane. And this is, uh, I'm sorry, it's not ta, it's ta. Ta uh, also means wing. So the plane flies by the wing. Okay, it's almost there. No, All right, thank you. Up now. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm actually almost there, but just before I finish, quickly, some common phrases in Navajo. So hello is Yate, this is last line. Yate. So don't say Brian's hero name. So my name is. So she means I, and A is, is like the Y in Japanese in choose the topic. So she A, Brian, Brian, you know she No, 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 so I, Brian, am called. So you notice the sh, the sh is the one that comes here between the two. Yeah. So yeah, I, I won't go into these two, but anyway, you get the idea of how the verb is formed. And I live in Berlin. Berlin de k hash t. Yeah. And the So k hash in this case means to live. K is a word for meaning land or, or country. So I live, I, I live in Berlin country. And I come from Munich. Is Munich. De, de, na, sha. And sha is also the word for walk. The same word we saw just now, the a, uh, is the same for walk. So I walk from, uh, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I walk from Munich, it's just a word meaning I come from Munich. And ahe, uh, Thank you. Ahe, he. Thank you. If you want to pick down the numbers, these are the numbers in Navajo. So uh, one is, uh, sorry, zero is Nasbans. 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 
Thank you. Thank you.